Let's receive right now our fresh daily bread from our Heavenly Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, we believe we receive right now our fresh living word, our daily bread. Thank you, Father, that this word is spirit and it is life, that you put your thoughts into my mind and your words into my mouth. I thank you, Father, that every person that you have drawn to listen, Father, that every person, this word is quickened in them. They have an attentive ear and they have a receptive heart in Jesus' name. And confess with me now the Lordship of Jesus. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is Lord over my life. Jesus is Lord over my family. Jesus is Lord over my nation. And Jesus is Lord over the nations of the earth. He is Lord of all. And now let's confess our reception of the Word of God. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you that you open my ears to hear as the learned, that you have given me eyes that see, ears that hear, and a heart that understands. And that as I hear this word, Father, that as I plant this word in my heart, I hear it, I receive it, and it produces a hundredfold. I thank you, Father, that I hear today what the Holy Spirit is saying to me personally. And Father, that by faith, I am a doer of the word and not a hearer only in Jesus' name. So yesterday was the first day of 2024. This is a blessed, fruitful year. This is a good, good, great year because Jesus is doing great and mighty things throughout the earth and in each one of our lives. Yesterday, the Holy Spirit gave me the scriptures in Deuteronomy 30, where he says that I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life so that you and your seed may live. And then he gave us in Mark eleven twenty four, 24, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And in Job chapter 22, 28, thou shalt also decree a thing and it shall be established unto you and the light shall shine upon your ways. Another scripture that the Lord quickened to me this morning is Habakkuk 2.2. 2. Write the vision, make it plain upon tables so that he that reads it, let's see, he, that, he may run that reads it. And he said, though it tarry, wait for it, it will surely come to pass. So this whole week is a great week for you to make the choice of what your 2024 and beyond is going to be. We're not going to limit it to this because you as a believer, we as believers go from glory to glory. And so I encourage you and urge you to take this whole week to pray and ask the Lord the vision that he has for you for this year. But this is what he has placed on my heart and mind to share with you is to make this at the top of your list that you will, that we will learn more effectively how to pray, that we will be more fruitful in our prayer life because this will affect all the other areas you know, so rather than writing down something like new house, new car, which uh, I, have, I may have mentioned that, but rather than that, let's focus on the spiritual part that we are going to grow in him stronger in our prayer life and in knowing him. And then, like I said, this will affect every area of our lives. 
So let's go over to Psalms 34, verse 15. And these are scriptures. This is what the Lord says. You know, the, the only way we know what is in his heart is by his word. Now you have the Holy Spirit and he will give you his word. But when you go to the word and you say, okay, what did God say about my prayer life? Then you know it is written. Then you can lay that foundation in your heart so that Satan can't bring in doubt and um, cause you to waver. When you know what the word says, then it is a solid rock, but it has to be in you. Like we gave you the scripture yesterday, John 15. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. So having his words abiding in you is a very important key to having your prayers answered. And you know, it is God's will. Well, I won't go there. Let's, let's go back to Psalms 34, 15. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. Who are the righteous? If you are born again, you have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So you can say that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So here, this belongs to you. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. Say that. Say, God's eyes are on me and his ears are open unto their cry. Say, his ears are open unto my cry. Psalms 34, 7 17, the righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all of their troubles. Do you know you don't have to share God with everybody else? He is your God. He is my God. So it's not like when you call on him, he's got to stop and go take care of somebody else's prayer. No, this is why Jesus came. Jesus could only be in one place at one time. But when he went to heaven, before he went, he said, I go to my God and your God, my Father and your Father. So when you go into the throne room in Matthew 6, and he says, enter into your closet and shut the door. Why? Because then it's just you and your father, Daddy in there alone, and you have his undivided attention. Isn't that good news? So the righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all of their troubles. So you can start out the year by saying, Father, I thank you that I'm crying, and you hear, and you delivered me out of all of my troubles. And if, the, if you don't have any troubles, then say, I thank you, Father, that you keep me from troubles. No troubles this year and beyond. Psalms 91, 15. This is one of the promises, and I love this, where we say, we start out saying, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. He is my fortress. He is my God. In him alone do I trust lean upon and rely upon. And then he says in verse 15, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. So he doesn't just stand there. He says, I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and I will honor him. He is a delivering God. He is our deliverer. Jeremiah 33, 3. God speaks this through, Jer through the prophet Jeremiah. Call unto me. And what will he do? And I will answer you. So let's do that again. Call unto me and I will answer you. He doesn't put you on hold. He doesn't... Uh, 
say, wait a minute, I've got to do this first. No, he says, call unto me, I will answer. You call, I will answer. Are there people in your life that you call and you know that they will answer your call immediately? Well, God says, and you don't even have to wait for a ringtone. God says, you call, I will answer. And show you great and mighty things that you know not. I mix faith with this. I say, Father, I'm calling unto you. And I thank you in Jesus' name that you are right now showing me great and mighty, great and hidden things that I don't know. We have total access to the God who created the heavens and the earth, who knows all things. In Jesus are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge and saints, he is in you. Then Isaiah 65, 24, and I love this, and it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer, and while they are yet speaking, I will hear. So let's go to what Jesus said about our prayer life, because this is the foundation. You have to have the foundation of the word in your heart in order for you to know and be confident in your prayer life. Going back to John 15, if you abide in me and my words abide in you. So take these scriptures, I encourage you to take these scriptures, and this being the first week of the year, and plant them in your heart. Read them. Speak them so that this word is producing the fruit of prayer, of having your prayers answered. In Matthew 18, 18, he says, Verily I say unto you, this is Jesus speaking, Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done. That word shall is a strong word. It shall be done. It shall be done. Not it may be done. Not if we think it ought to be. No, he says, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. This word alleviates any doubt as to whether or not the Father will answer. And this is the prayer of agreement. So I use that. I've uh, called my son and asked him to agree with me on things. I called my sister, my sister-in-law, my daughter, and we agree. And you know what? God does it. I did not keep a journal this past year. But there are so many, I can just think back of so many times when we had to have an answer and we had to have it immediately and God did it after we agreed on it. But our part is to set ourselves in agreement. Then in Mark chapter 9, verse 23, Jesus said unto him, If you can believe all things are possible to him that believes. What is the qualification? Him that believes. And then in Matthew 21, 22, Jesus said this, And all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing 
you shall receive. First of all, whatsoever includes everything. And then he says that you shall ask in prayer. And then he says, believing. So the believing is a vital part of your prayer life. Not hoping it, not wishing it, not thinking maybe, but actually believing. And he said, you shall receive. What are you going to receive? Those things that you ask in prayer, believing. And you know, our faith is not in prayer. Our faith is in the word that tells us that God will answer our believing prayers. So you just think about this. Your prayer life will cover your spiritual life. It will cover your family. It will cover your health. It will cover your uh, prosperity. It will cover your relationships. It will cover your country. Your prayers will affect every area of your life. Then let's go to John 14, verse 12. Jesus said this, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believes on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And, I love his ands, and whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. You know, he didn't mince words about it. He said, whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. What's the it he's going to do? What you ask in Jesus' name. He is very firm about that. And since Jesus spoke it, and he said, I only say those things I hear my father say, this is the word of God to you. And so this is God's will for you, is for him to answer your prayers. You know, as, as I go through the Gospels and I see how many times Jesus said to ask the Father or pray to the Father, he's telling us, God wants you to pray. My Father wants you to pray over everything. If you're going on a trip, pray for everything to go perfect, perfect weather, perfect um, safety, abundance of money, perfect everything. Pray for everything in your life to be perfect. And I know you hear people say, well, everything can't be perfect. I disagree with that. Psalms 138.8, the Lord says that the Lord will perfect, make perfect that thing which concerns you. So let me give you um, one more, and then we will look at this some more again tomorrow. In John 16, verse 23, Jesus said this, And in that day you shall ask me nothing. In other words, you don't pray to Jesus. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. At that day, you shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you, for the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me and have believed that I came out from God. So, the first week of 2024, be very purposeful 
about increasing the fruit of your prayer life. Because like the Holy Spirit said, this will affect every area of your life. And so Father, in Jesus name, right now I just believe for every person that is listening that you give them understanding and knowledge of their prayer life and just put it in their hearts, Father, to be more fruitful, to bear more fruit in their prayer life, to increase in their prayer life, in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you that you show each one of them what to pray for, because your thoughts are so far higher than our own thoughts. Father, we just bless you and praise you for this word and for your guarantee to answer our every prayer in Jesus' name.